Last time I've seen you for coming chain save, we have just finished the summer transfer window. I had meant to talk about some players that were still at the club that were unhappy, but that's been resolved now, so that's slightly awkward. I'll talk about their new contest instead. And we have got a player that has won an award in October, which is why we are stopping in October instead of December. It felt like a good time to just come back and talk about things because it was one of those things that you just weren't expecting. But either way, happy days. Still, we're in October. Last time we won this match, we weren't top of the table. Have things changed? Let's find out together. Well, the first game we had since we came back from the international break was a 3-0 win against Wiesler Krakow. Robert Kowalski came off on the bench and got two goals in a matter of three minutes. So, clearly, he's in good form. And we are a good team in this universe now. So, this team used to cause us problems back in the day. Now Kenneth is retired, he doesn't seem to be causing us problems. And neither does the team. So, we've weathered this storm apparently. Then we took an Eintracht Frankfurt and lost 3-0 to them. Did we deserve to lose this game? Honestly, probably yes, but it still hurts to say the least that we were this bad. Defensively, nobody in the back five got above a 6.4, which tells you how bad we were defensively. And we need to really work on that going forward, don't we? So, analytical data. I love this screen now. These are our shots. I don't know why we took a shot here, but we did. I don't even know who it is that took the shot. Who on earth? That's Kimmich. I don't know why the writing's so bright and yellow and white. It just doesn't work for this one. But yeah, we weren't very good. If you look at where our shots were, it just wasn't great. Off target, just outside the area, twice. Off target there. We did have some shots saved, though, to be fair. So it wasn't like we were terrible. We just weren't very good. We did have a few shots blocked as well, but that's beside the point. Frankfurt are really good, and they dismantled us by three goals to nil, and we deserve to lose this game, 100%. We then took on Renamit Redon and beat them 5-1. Robert Kowalski came off the bench again and got another brace, so I think I found Kowalski's role now. It was 2-1 at halftime, and then in the 80th minute plus, we just decided to turn the game on its head and completely make Radovic Radon stay miserable. I wasn't expecting Kavals to get two goals like he did, but clearly, he's a good player to bring on when they are tired. But Tars Kavals, he got two assists as well, as did Mineki, so clearly, good decisions have been made in this day, and I'm happy with this squad. Did we deserve the scoreline? Probably not, if you look at the XG and all that stuff, but we had six shots on target, and we scored with five of them, so clearly, their keeper with a 5.9 rating should have done better himself. We then took on Gornik Zabshir, and we beat them by two goals to nil. A team that has caused a problem in the past recently, Omar Edwards being a manager, so he needs to know how to nullify my attacks, but we still won this game by two goals to nil anyway, and I'm happy with this situation. Because it's another win in our collection. And this time, we did underscore the XG of the match. So, a nice little thing to actually have in our back pocket. But perhaps we should do better with the XG sometimes. Not because I don't think we were very good. We still were really consistent and very promising. Even if they had 8 shots, they weren't very good shots. But... Because of the fact that we weren't scoring as many goals as the XG said we could have done. So, if we can match the XG or exceed it, that's great. But if we underperform it, then I'm going to call it a disappointing result. I'm just going to be blunt and say that. Then this game happened, and yeah, not ideal. Astana caused us problems and almost made sure we didn't get the win here. Really disappointed with this result, and... Yes, I actually suggest we actually overformed barely, but they were annoying. Very annoying. They didn't do anything. We then scored. I had to go attacking. I'm very attacked for it. Then they scored to make it 1 1. And then two minutes later, Kowalski scores again. And when things aren't going your way, they're just not going your way. Podolski is starting to prove to be a very good player on the right hand side. Another two assists to his name as 8.6 rating. I think I've found my solution that allows Davidovic to be up front as a striker. Which is lovely, because I now have the opportunity to have a world-class striker 
for this division, not for the, the game. But a top, top striker up front and someone who will be able to grow into the role of the right winger and not be hindered by David Rich being in his way. So, lovely that's the case. Another win, our first in the Champions League, but another win to add to our collection. Also, these are our shots. I, I don't know why like, the yellow white thing's there, but we actually had three shots blocked. <clears throat> we actually had four shots that were saved from outside the area, so those weren't very good shots, but we did have a lot of shots blocked as well in the areas or off target. Yeah, we had a lot of shots off target, so that's annoying. And um, we still need to do better than that. Four direct free kicks that were saved, two shots outside the area that were off target, and some that were just blocked. And yeah, we need to do better than this, really. We weren't amazing. The conversion rate of our chances is really bad, and I need to do better. The last game we had before we met up was against Brogan Switzing, and this was tight. And honestly, gonna be honest with you, didn't think we we're gonna win this for a moment of time, especially when in the second half they were honestly the better team. So that's unusually bad for us, but we got the win regardless. And did we deserve it? Perhaps. But at the same time, you could probably say no. We had the better chances, but they definitely made sure to make us work for this. And fair play to them. They're a good team this year. And we needed this win a lot more than I thought we did, given how good they've been this year. So another win to the collection at least. What's happened in the league as a result of this match? Well, now we are four points clear of pocket sweats in Alekia Dine. So that's good. Lek Poznan only relegation zone, by the way. I had to point that out very early because I still can't believe it myself and it's one of those things that's happening. They've sat their manager, they're literally out of every competition this year. So their season has been so poor that they've literally had to sack the manager and they've got 24 games left to save their season and get into European football. What on earth is Lech Poznan doing is my question. And I say that because they're still a top two team in this list. We have now got fire players in the middle of Dream 11, which is showing how good we've become, even if our goalkeeper's now 27. But even so, this is still a massive underperformance for Lech Poznan. And I can't even say our season's ever been this bad when we've been this good. Also, if noticed already, Davidovich has already got 11 goals this year. So the move to put him up front as a striker has absolutely paid off. And it made sense in my mind to do it now, even if he's inconsistent and can't shoot from outside the area. But that's not important right now. The last three years before this year, he'd already gotten at least 10 goals this season. This year might be his best season in terms of goal scoring. It was when I realized he'd already got 13, 14 goals as a winger and getting 10 plus assists as well. This year's the one that I think will determine whether or not he can stay as a striker. He's only got two player of the match awards as well, but he's just been really consistent at times, and it's really useful to have this kind of talent in your team. Speaking of players, I should talk about the ones that wanted to leave. They don't want to leave anymore. Ernest has signed a new contract, which is keeping him until 2046, and also has a one-year extension if I need it to. Yes, I'm paying him first in grand a week, but honestly, given the money we were bringing in at this point, that's not a lot of money to pay for a player of this quality. He's a star player for the division. He's the best player in our division, in our league, in our team. Yeah, he's he's amazing. He's top, top class. Mario Szczesinski isn't even that good, but he is still a player that we want to keep around. £10,000 a week. He's now got a new contract for 2046 as well. He's a lean player. He's consistent. Doesn't like big matches. Only downside to him, but another optional extension as well for one year as well. So we've got him for a while. It's great. And Christian Kimmich is here, long term. He's now a star player as well. And that's lovely. He's inconsistent, but likes big matches. So you pick him and you choose him, I suppose. Either way, he's here. He's a star player, £14,000 a week. And two years optional extension for him. It's pretty much a seven-year contract. So that's lovely, isn't it? We're going to keep him for ages and he can't complain. Ha 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 A shame he can't get much better, but it's great either way, isn't it? Also, despite all those new contracts, 
we still only got the fourth biggest payroll and that says a lot doesn't it the fourth biggest salary per year is still only us we are only paying 9.9 .9 million a year right now which tells you just how well we've been doing in these last couple of years and also just how bad Lech Poznan who are paying 16.2 million pounds a year almost six million more than everyone else in the league and they're in 16th imagine if they go down with that kind of budget that would be embarrassing wouldn't it also we've still got 112 million in the bank i am very comfortable with that kind of wage budget quite frankly that could pay pretty much 12 years 13 years of the salary so that's great and i think we're fine probably just 11 years at this point but you get the point we're very comfortable financially and we don't need to worry about giving pay rises to players at this point in time but still the award we have won the award my player has won what was it Davidovic won the fifa best under 21 men's player of the year yep that's a thing that's happened and we finally cracked this we were closed last year Kimmich got second place but this year we've won it and it feels like a massive deal because he also had the best average rating he got 28 goal contributions as well and yeah the other two players were defenders so i guess it's not that fair of a comparison but if you look at last year Kimmich got further than this with 26 goals and then you look at the two teams that he lost out to both amazing Portuguese players both came from victoria gamirez and yeah we finally cracked this i don't think we'll be able to get another one of these in a while unless Ernest gets really good or something which he is right now to be fair but with a player from Andelet who's now playing at Real Madrid and a player who came from Lokomotiv Motiv playing at Leg Poznan but has also moved since then to Hanover. Yes, so this guy left Leg Poznan to go to Hanover. It makes me wonder if that's partly why they're doing so badly. But yeah, £29 million they sold him for. I can't blame them either. But there you go. Signed for 2.5, sold for 29. It's a great deal. I can't blame Leg Poznan for that move at all. And he's playing the Bundesliga for Hanover, who are in the Champions League. So that's a good sign for them. And that's also good for them. Also, I should talk about the Champions League since we're here. We're 21st place, but we have a long way to go. We still have some really good talents to try and take on. Newcastle have only got one point so far. So that's not ideal for them. And if you look at the teams that we got left in the competition... Palace, Tottenham, and the late Mosta, Milan, and Newcastle. I truly don't see us getting out of this competition, if I'm honest with you. Despite my hopes that we can, Palace are the top of the group. Milan are good on their day. It's a Newcastle's Newcastle at this point. They are really good at this point in time. Mosta have got a point, strange enough, as of Andalit. So actually, Andalit and Mosta are probably the two places we can get points in. If we can get wins in those two matches, we might have a chance to get a top 24 place, but I don't see us getting a top 8 place anytime soon, even if our team is now the best team we've had in the save so far. But that's just me. I say that despite the fact that Mihal Jaros is still in Man City and I sold him for 20 million. But that's beside the point. Either way though, I'm going to end this here. I hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. I hope you guys will like and share this video. And that you'll subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a lot. What do you think of David Duritz winning the FIFA's best under 21s player of the year? I want to hear your thoughts and opinions on that and how we've been doing down below. But anyway, until next time, goodbye and well, good night.